okay, so can AI or ChatGPT write a Black Mirror episode? You may have seen this from a little while back. Uh, it looks like maybe it was like a June 8th. This is a, a UK site, so they show the 8th first, but June 8th. Uh, the creator of Black Mirror said he got ChatGPT to write a Black Mirror episode, but it was shit. And uh, I thought that was interesting at the time, but then now, especially with the writer's strike and all that going on, and um, people talking about how AI could replace the writers, I thought, you know, let's kind of see what it can do. So the first thing I did is I just went and um, pulled a bunch of the synopses from uh, Wikipedia, actually, right? So I went to Wikipedia, list of episodes. I just picked ones at random. By the way, I'm not actually a Black Mirror like watcher, really. I think I've watched maybe two episodes ever. Um, so I just sort of picked ones at random here and, uh, and pulled them to be synopses. I just copy and pasted them in. I formatted them a little bit here, right? Synopses two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now, if you're a Black Mirror fan, it's San Junipero, Nosedive, USS Callister, which is one I actually have seen, Archangel, Hang the DJ, Beyond the Sea, which I guess is a new one, and the Smithereens, or Smithereens, which I guess is a new one too. And one quick note, actually, as I get going here, I think my goal of this video is not just about answering the question, which I will at least share my thoughts on and show you what I kind of came up with thus far, but I hope it also shows people how to interact with AI and ChatGPT in a different way and how to use prompts to get potentially very good outputs or outputs that are much better than what you know you might be getting by simply asking a question. And also you're gonna see how I go kind of multimodal. And by that, I don't mean it in the AI sense as much as I mean I use different tools. I'm tool agnostic as you're gonna see here, right? So I took all of these. So the first thing I did, I actually really wanted to use Agent GPT, which is an amazing tool. Um, but I was having a weird issue tonight where it was giving me these like, uh, like rate limits or whatever. So anyway, I put it kind of in here, um, with all the synopses, right. And, um, I kept getting this weird rate limit thing reached, which I kind of know what's going on with it, but anyway, um, so we'll come back to that. Cause my goal was to have it come up with more, um, more ideas. Right. But I went to another tool I really like called chatbot. UI where you can plug in your API key, you have GPT-4, whatever, and uh, do that. So I basically said, right, the following are some plot synopses for a popular television show called Black Mirror. Reading these synopses, what can you infer about this show? So it was the first thing I did. I gave it the same synopses you just saw and had it go through here. And here's what it gave me, right? Anthology format, themes, the show, uh, heavily deals with the theme with themes related to technology, society, and human nature. It often presents dystopian futures or alternate realities, examining the potential consequences of certain technological advancements on individual lives and society as a whole. Talked about technology, right? It involves innovative yet plausible technologies, social commentary, of course, genre, right? It blends genres, um, sh seam seamlessly blends them. So shout out to the creator moral and ethical questions, and it kind of does it in bullet form, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. So meanwhile, I took that list and I brought it over to GPT-4, which was giving me, it said basically I violated the content policy, maybe because one of the synopses talked about sex, I don't know. So, um, you know, that was a little irksome, but it had like this list here, right? That I, I gave it, um, I basically took that list it's not showing me the prompt. And I said, what would you add? It had psychological depth, consequences of technological dependence, narrative, innovation, satire, and irony, and unexpected endings. So I'm like, all right, cool. Let's add those to the list as well. So meanwhile, you know, I had Agent GPT going to try to come up with ideas for different um, potential plot, like plot ideas, right? So over here, I got these issues, but it was starting. This is what it normally, what's really cool about Agent GPT, if you don't know this, is like it keeps iterating. There's different bots. So it'll come up with potentially like, you know, 30, 40, 50 ideas, or it might just decide to start writing a script and writing the different parts of a script. There's a lot of really cool things. So I'm going to come back and probably play with this when Agent GPT is cooperating, which it almost always does. It kind of sucks that it decided not to do tonight while I'm making this video. Um, but let me zoom in a little bit and I'll show you some of the uh, episodes. And by the way, Another important note is that not every piece, every idea is gonna be a great idea, but some of them might be really interesting. 
So, you know, it basically has these like episode title, right? These are ones it's coming up with. Lifeline, uh, where basically in the future, Natalie, a police officer, is partnered with an AI called Lifeline, but it's sort of programmed to predict crime. And I'm like, oh, that feels a little bit like Minority Report. Let's skip that one. Evolve is about genetically modified children. Um, and this one couple decides to not have a genetically modified child and what will happen. There's one about a social score, which is frankly sort of relevant to one of the examples I fed it. But then this one I thought was really interesting. So uh, episode titled The Mirror Box. Tom, a psychologist, creates a device that allows individuals to confront their reflections, complete with all their flaws and insecurities. However, as people start using the device to become obsessed with their perceived imperfections, leading to psychological disorders and societal chaos, Tom must face the unintended consequences of his creation and find a way to reverse its effects. Now, you know, I kind of did a really quick little search to see. I, I, like, I searched the mirror box right here and trying to make sure there wasn't like a Black Mirror episode and it was just regurgitating it for me. Um, it's possible this is already a sci-fi idea. I don't know. You know, I'll have to look. Uh, but let's assume for now it's not, and I'll confirm probably before publishing this video. If you see me publish this video, it means I don't really see it as one. Well. And beyond that, right, there's just a bunch of these... Um, bunch more ideas. My cat's coming up now to, to try and script this video, which is great. So <laughs> um, anyway, super interesting, right? So now I went over to Claude. Now what's really cool about Claude is you can upload files. So basically I Googled around and found um, like three kind of full screenplays of Black Mirror episodes that were someone linked to on Reddit and downloaded them and then uploaded them to Claude. And I told Claude, I'll make my screen bigger for you here. You're a world-class Hollywood screenwriter. Right now, I'm sharing three completed scripts for a TV show called Black Mirror. Your first job is to analyze these scripts and find commonalities in the structure of the screenplays. Our goal is to create a template model off these three screenplays that we could use to write additional screenplays in the future without difficulty. Um, and like, here are the three key... And I basically said, here are, oh, sorry, I did this. Here are the three key structural commonalities I observed in the three Black Mirror scripts. So it's got your act structure, Right, um, they have a traditional three-act structure. There's a setup, confrontation, and resolution. And um, plots are driven by technology. There's thematic exploration. And then here's like a template, right? It gives me act one. I think the cat really wants to make a cameo. You come in front of the screen for a minute? There you go. Do you say hi? You can be famous? Not really, because it's Twitter. Like 50 people will watch it, probably. But, um, so basically gives me act one, act two, act uh, three, okay? He's like, does this, you know, capture the key structural elements? I said, yeah, it does. But I would argue, you know, they have the following key characteristics. And I basically just copy and pasted in the ones that I got from Chatbot UI and, Ch and GPT-4, right? And then I said, do you agree? And what do you think should be added uh, to this list or changed? Claude said, I agree. The only thing I would add is focus on character experience. While exploring broad societal questions, Black Mirror episodes tend to focus closely on the intimate experiences and emotions of one or two central characters. The technological plots serve as a backdrop to tell deeply personal stories. Um, and it kind of goes on to give me more input from that, right? So I'm like, hey, that's a great insight, Claude. Good job. So now I'm going back to the mirror box. I really like that idea. So keep, uh, keeping in mind that you're a world-class screenplay writer, I'm going to give you the synopsis for a new Black Mirror episode. Episode title, The Mirror Box. Again, we mentioned what this was. Tom, a psychologist, creates a device that allows individuals to confront their reflections and yada yada. Now, using what you know about how the scripts are structured and all the key characteristics we've identified together, please create a potential outline for this episode. Remember, be creative, take risks, think outside the box. Give it a try now. Claude said, all right, sounds good. Here is a potential outline for the Mirror Box episode of Black Mirror. Act one, open on Tom, an academic psychologist giving a TED talk on how people hide from their true selves and advocating radical self-honesty. He unveils, proto um, unveils a prototype of the mirror box. Tom demonstrates the mirror box for the audience. It is a small box with an interior video screen. When you look inside, it uses eye tracking, biometric scans, and AI, AI to generate a photorealistic reflection of yourself that brutally reveals your physical and psychological flaws through harsh comments about your insecurities. We'll come back to that in a moment. Tom's demonstration shocks the audience, but most are fascinated. Investors approach him afterwards. Tom founds Mirrorix and launches the Mirror Box as an affordable personal product, believing it will help people confront their flaws and achieve self-actualization. Early scenes show people's reactions to their reflections. Some are devastated, others galvanized to change. Eccentric tech billionaire Jack Hanrady buys a custom Mirror Box and Presti invites Tom over. 
Act two, over time, your boxes lead to an epidemic of anxiety, depression, addiction, and even suicide as people become consumed by their perceived flaws exposed by the product. Tom is horrified, but Hannity blocks his attempt to pull the product as it's making them both rich. Desperate, Tom uses Hannity's custom ear box, but is shocked when the AI reflection reveals Hannity's sociopathic and criminal business practices instead of physical flaws. Pretty interesting twist. Tom threatens to expose Hannity with his idea, or with this data, sorry, with this data, but Hannity turns the tables on Tom, threatening to reveal that he concealed Mirror Rick's product risks. He will block product recall unless Tom helps him use Mirror Box psychographic data to achieve his political ends. Tom appears complicit, but secretly builds Mirror Armor to shield himself from the product's effects, then uses Mirror X systems and customer data to send augmented counter-reflection to all Mirror Boxes to spark a mass awakening. Act 3. Henry discovers Tom's plan and sends kill squads, but Tom broadca broadcasts himself through every Mirror Box, denouncing the product he created, urging people to smash their boxes, and promising to delete all Mirror X customer data. Showdown, where Henry hunts Tom through the Mirror X offices, but Tom uses mirrors and reflection tricks to gain advantage and expose Henry's true nature over the video screens. I don't know fully what the hell that means, to be honest with you. Coda, with Tom forgiving himself for his role in the fiasco and hinting he will use the lessons learned to help discover, help people discover themselves through healthier methods. The true reflection is within. And so here's what I said. I mean, I think that's actually a pretty uh, good script idea. Again, I don't know. Is it plagiarizing some sci-fi classic that I'm just ignorant about? Maybe you tell me because I don't know. But I think it's kind of, um, it's interesting to me, right? I kind of like, I'm, I'm pretty engrossed in that story overall. The one thing I said is like, you know, I think it's good, but I feel like the end should be more unsettling and dystopian. So that's one, right? Because again, this is what you do with AI. You treat it like an intern or a partner or a creative partner or whatever you want to say. So it's not about just like saying, oh, great, I guess that's my output. You tell it, you know, how to change things. And I said, also for this part, right, the, um, the part where it talks about how it reveals your uh, physical and psychological flaws through harsh comments about your insecurities, I told it, I think it would be more interesting if the comments are supposed to be purely objective instead of harsh. So maybe it's that some people think the comments are harsh because they are so honest, but others value the honesty. By doing this, we can touch on themes of honesty, and if honesty is always the best medicine, you know, can you take another shot at the outline where you incorporate those changes? And uh, it said, you know, good point. Making mirror boxes reflections seem more objective and honest rather than outright harsh creates some nuance and explores thought-provoking themes. Here's an alternate act, right, um, that kind of incorporates that idea. And then in Act 3, has it to where instead of uh, everything going back to normal, essentially society remains divided with Tom wondering if this highly filtered truth is necessary for mental well-being. Um, you see sort of some people smashing their mirror boxes while others seem addicted to his painful truths, right? Pretty cool. So I'm like, all right, cool. Good job overall. Now, given all of this and the provided references of screenplays, can you write the first few pages of the screenplay script for Mirrorbox? As you do it, remember that you're a world-class screenplay writer. And remember to model off the example screenplay PDFs as far as format, structure, writing style, et cetera, go. So here's what it came up with, right? Here's the speculative first five pages of the Mirrorbox screenplay in proper screenwriting format modeled after the provided Black Mirror examples. Uh, exterior lux lecture hall, yo day. A massive tech logo adorns the exterior of a modern auditorium Attendees file inside, passing by a sign that reads, Mirrorix Technology Showcase. Um, in a sleek backstage area, Tom Langford, 40s, reserved and bookish, paces nervously, reviewing note cards. An assistant speaks into a headset, then cues Tom. Dr. Langford, you're on. Tom takes the stage to light applause from a, a chic, smart-looking audience. High-tech gadgets and monitors surround him. Tom, for decades I've studied human self-deception, deception, how we conceal our flaws and weaknesses even from ourselves. Intercut with audience faces, a diverse mix of tech entrepreneurs, academics, students, and influencers. Tom continued, we all wear masks, polished off online profiles, rehearsed conversations, filtered truths tailored to each social circle. Often, even our closest friends and family don't know our deepest struggles and insecurities, which we hide behind these false fronts. In the audience, there's a striking woman in a power suit. She shifts on self. Tom, but what if simply seeing the unobscured truth could set us free? Murmurs ripple through the audience. Tom unveils an object under a sheet, dramatic music sting. He reveals the mirror box, a sleek miniature cube with an interior video screen. Tom, continued, I give you the mirror box, a revolutionary AI and biometric technology that generates an undisguised reflection of your deepest true self. Gas and disbelief from the audience. Tom continued, a reflection that reveals brutal yet necessary truths we all must confront to achieve genuine self-understanding. 
Tom opens the box and gazes into the screen. Mirror box reflection. Look at you, still hiding, still lying to them, to yourself. Tom snaps the box shut, rattled, collects himself. The audience is silent, stunned. I'm like, all right, hey, Claude, that was a great start, right? Are there little things that I might tweak? Sure. And that's another thing I want people to take away from this video if you watch it, is it's not like you just, even with this output, maybe you have to modify things, but I don't know. Again, I'm not a screenplay expert. I'm one of the best copywriters on the planet, so I've written scripts that have generated billions of dollars in revenue. Um, so I'm sure that some hipster, you know, on-strike screenwriter in Hollywood will tell me what's wrong with it. But at the end of the day, I think you should be the judge. Like, are you interested in this story based on what you're hearing as you watch this video? So I'm like, hey, this is a great start. Can you uh, keep, I should said, I said doing it going with the next few pages based on the outline we created? You know, take your time. Final screenplay will be 50 plus pages. You do not need to try and complete everything. Just keep going with the next few pages. So now it keeps going, right? Now you're in interior of the VIP room later. After his presentation, Tom sits with Jack Hannity, 50s and an aloof tech billionaire. Hannity examines a mirror box prototype. Jack says, outstanding work. Truly, people can't hide from themselves, not with this. I'll take 100 units for myself and another 1,000 for my inner circle. Like, see, I think that's not great dialogue, but you know, you get it that. Tom, that's generous, Jack, but I want to restrict supply initially. This technology needs rigorous ethical safeguards. Jack waves his hand, ignoring the notion. Jack, I'll also connect you to my Silicon Valley partners. They'll eat this up. We'll make a billion in the first month. Tom shifts, not wanting to balloon sales so rapidly. Jack continued, think bigger, Tom. Don't baby this. The world needs truth, even if it stings. And then we cut to an interior. It's the headquarters, and Tom stands before his young, eager team. Giant mirror box logos and tech displays surround uh, them. Tom, okay, I met with some new investors. They convinced me we should accelerate production. The team cheers, but Tom looks ambivalent. Now it's upscale home at night. Lauren Peck, 30s, the polished stylish woman from Tom's presentation. You like that callback? That's pretty sick, right? So I remember she's like the smartly dressed woman in the audience from the first scene. Right now she's opened, uh, opening a box with her mirror box in it. She sets it up, takes a deep breath, and opens the box. And it says, you know, the, the box is saying, well, well, little Lauren Peck, still pretending you belong in these rooms. But we know the truth, don't we? The crippling self-doubt. Lauren gasps, trembling. Next scene, right back to exterior, State Street Day. A balding, overweight man hurries along, filling with his mirror box, mirror box reflection. Do you really need that bear claw and extra breakfast sandwich? You can't look at yourself naked anymore, you disgusting slob. The man drops the food, distraught, passerby, where a passerby is where mirror boxes, some smile, others appear deeply shaken. Um, we go back to Tom's office. He's seeing the news of mirror boxes, rapid societal effects. Rising rates of anxiety, body dysmorphia, even suicide are attributed to the product. He's horrified, picks up the phone to call Jack Hanready. On the, over the phone, Jack says, we can't take off the market now. The public needs to sip the discomfort. Sales are blowing up globally. Tom hangs up conflicted. He opens his laptop and types in Mirrorbox uh, product recall strategy. Which again, might be something different like that, right? Um, oh, I thought this was kind of fun. Where was it here? I don't know if I want to go through the entire script of this, right? Oh, that might annoy you, but um, there's something else interesting here. I thought I was gonna find it. Where basically he actually puts on um, he puts on Jack's like a uh, personal mirror box, right? Yeah, Tom opens his own mirror box, newly resolute, but the AI reflection bears Hammerdy's face now, not Tom's, right? I like that little twist. And it adds Hanny says, go ahead, expose me. Who are people going to believe? The wounded psychologist who helped cover up his product's dangers or the billionaire philanthropist? And, uh, you know, keeps going from here. But I think it's trying to sort of like close it. It's trying to end it too early. But again, there's a lot I could do. But I don't know. You tell me. I feel like that's a pretty good, that's pretty solid, right? And I'm not sure if owners showed like themselves using it to write a script like in this way. Maybe they have. Uh, but... So that was cool. I want to share one more thing before I kind of finish this video, which is ended up, of course, being a lot longer than I expected it to be. So if we go back to chatbot, right? Temperature is 0.8, by the way, which is the uh, level of creativity. It'd be interesting to try a nine or a 10. Um, so we had again here, like the, like we asked for the, um, the characteristics, right? And I added these ones. Okay, so then basically I gave it, I kind of started the prompt over. I gave it the plot synopses again. I did in the same chat in this case. And then I ran my agent, I gave it all the, the characteristics we talked about. 
Now I basically said, again, you're a world-class copywriter, or copywriter, I'm a copywriter, world-class screenwriter who specializes in coming up with brilliant and creative ideas for science fiction shows like Black Mirror. Your job is to come up with as many ideas as you can for potential new episodes of Black Mirror. Be creative, take risks, think outside the box, give variety, uh, keep in mind, you know, all the characteristics, go ahead. So it starts giving me these really interesting ideas as well. Um, there's the echo chamber, a new social media platform has emerged where users can upload a copy of their consciousness, allowing them to interact in the virtual world 24 seven, even when they're asleep in the real world. As more people join, the line between the real world and the virtual one starts to blur, leading to societal chaos. All right. Um, I thought this one was really interesting. Episode two, shadows on the wall. In the near future, a scientist invents a device that can project a person's dreams or nightmares onto a wall, like a film. Initially used for therapeutic purposes, it becomes a recreational fad with unforeseen consequences when people start getting addicted to living their dreams and others' nightmares, resulting in a society unable to distinguish between reality and imagination. And honestly, if I was going to search, let's see. Um, let's try just Googling this to make sure, you know, is that going to have any results? Like, there's a thing about an MIT machine captures the dreams you never know you had. So there's stories about it. But as far as I can tell from a very cursory look, like wasn't that my results, um, that seems like a pretty unique idea for a TV episode, right? Like. Again, maybe there's an old science fiction novel from the 60s or, or short story. Tell me if there is, I guess. But, like, I don't... I think with the like Black Mirror's creator talked about how it's just regurgitating old ideas, but it's, like, not how AI works, right? It does generate new ideas. It predicts stuff, and it, it creates new, interesting combinations of ideas. So, again, I'm not saying that maybe this idea hasn't been... You know, it's, if you think of the corpus of ideas that have been generated over human history and especially that we have now documented with you know increasing technology like it's hard to find an original idea period like i would argue probably most many of the black mirror ideas you could say were based on other ideas too right so anyway all that being said this seems pretty cool uh this one's like a virus i think this is too literal it's like not like you know it's basically a virus goes and screens turn black genetic roulette it likes that one a lot um there's interesting things about like editing memories, which I think are interesting. There's a transhumanism idea. This idea of the last artist is kind of interesting. Basically where you know, AI has mastered all forms of art. One human artist struggles to find her place, but when her art becomes a sensation for its human touch, society must reassess the value of human creativity versus artificial intelligence. I think there's something to that one, honestly. Um, there's one of people rewinding their day and making different decisions, but then they get stuck in these constant rewind loops. I think that's very interesting. Again, I don't know, hasn't been done. Um, but basically I said, all right, good job. Can you now expand the synopsis of the episode, uh, shadows on the wall? And it was like, sure. Right. So in a world where technological advancement has become synonymous with societal progress, Dr. Eliana Grimes, a renowned psychologist pioneers an unprecedented invention, a device that projects people's dreams and nightmares onto walls. The device known as dreamscape was conceived as a therapeutic tool, enabling psychologists like Dr. Grimes to better understand their patient's subconscious fears and desires. With the potential for deep psychoanalysis, Dreamscape revolutionizes therapy sessions. That is until the capabilities of the device somehow become public knowledge. Soon, a tech company repurposes the tool into an exciting recreational product. The device quickly becomes a trend, transforming slumber parties, gatherings, and casual meetings into vivid showcases of dreams and nightmares. As more people get their hands on the Dreamscape, the obsession with it grows. People start spending more and more time sleeping to live out their inner fantasies or experience the thrill of their nightmare in a safe environment. Soon millions are addicted to the device and society starts to, to crumble. Productivity drops, real world relationships disintegrate and the border between reality and the dream world begins to blur. The situation worsens as some users start experiencing hallucinations in their waking life, unable to discern between the dream and the reality. Dr. Grimes, horrified by the unintended consequences of her invention, decides to take matters into her own hands. She embarks on a desperate mission to reverse the tide and save society from the damaging effects of her own creation. She has to face the challenges from the tech company profiting off the chaos, the addicts resisting change in her own guilt. And it, to its credit, does not um, you know, try to give like a, a, a resolution. So now, because I can't feed a uh, PDF into GBT4, 
I just said like, all right, good job. Now I want you to become a world-class screenplay writer and you're going to write the first few pages of the script. Here are the first few pages of a real Black Mirror script so you can model off the formatting. Please note, you do not need to try and conclude the screenplay or even progress to the second act. Right now, just write the first few pages as you see it and note that the screenplay will be 86 pages total. I just made that number up. So there will be tons of room to continue on afterwards. And I gave an example from the USS Callister one based on the screenplay it found. Again, not to copy it, but to model off the structure of it, right? So it kind of understands. So I fed it this, and then here it started going, okay? Episode title, Shadows on the Wall. Fade in. Interior, Dr. Eliana Grimes' office night. Dimly lit room, sounds of a soft, steady beeping from a machine. Close up on Dr. Eliana Grimes, a woman in her 40s, serious but with warm eyes. She is intently observing a wall where a series of surreal images are being projected. The images are beautiful yet haunting, a clear projection of a dream. The source of the projection, the dreamscape device, a sleek and futuristic gadget connected to a sleeping patient, John Doe, on the couch. Suddenly, the images morph into disturbing scenes. John's face creases with distress. Dr. Grimes quickly notes this change in her digital notepad. Cut to interior tech company product launch event day. The once therapeutic tool, Dreamscape, is now the center of attention at a flashy product launch. A charismatic presenter is on stage, demonstrating the device to an eager audience. The presenter hooks up a volunteer to the Dreamscape. The audience laugh and gasp as the volunteer's silly and somewhat embarrassing dream is projected. The applause is tremendous. We'd have to say, well, what is a dream, right? Cut to interior Dr. Grimes' office night. Dr. Grimes watches the events on her computer with a look of concern. She turns to look at the Dreamscape device, ominous, ominously sitting at her desk. Cut to exterior city months later during the day. Montage of scenes showing the Dreamscape's popularity. It's on billboards, the TV ads, and everyone is using it at parties and parks on public transport. People are entranced by their own and others' dreams and nightmares. Fade into the interior of Dr. Grimes' uh, office during the day. Dr. Grimes is in a session of a patient. Suddenly the patient starts hallucinating seeing dreamlike projections, even without the device. Dr. Grimes looks horrified. Cut to uh, interior Dr. Grimes' night, home at night. A distressed Dr. Grimes watches the news, reports of hallucinations, accidents, and society failing to chaos due to dreamscape addiction. She looks at the device in her hand, regret etched in her face. So again, it's pretty uh, pretty cool there, right? I mean, I could have sworn I, had one other, I saw one other part to this, but I wonder if it, I guess I didn't. So yeah, anyway, I guess I have to keep going. I think I actually ran out of um, rate limits for this one. Basically for chatbot UI, the one downside is you sort of have to keep going. But frankly, what you could do, right, you could take this in a new window and be like, hey, you're a you know world-class screenplay writer. You're writing something for Black Mirror. Here's all the context. Here's the script you started. Now continue for the next few pages of the script. Don't try to finish it. And it would do it. Then you would go like, hey, now you're okay, right, whatever. And there's other tools that I'm sure like whatever, right? But um, yeah, so I don't know what I mean. If you look at this and what Claude was doing, and and for me, like it's, it's really about like the writing is never going to be the issue. So as a copywriter, I use AI to help write a lot of stuff. And it's like I will refine and take my paintbrush and, and fine tweak the stuff I'm writing for copy or things like that. But really it's the ideation that's most impressive. So what I hope you would take from this beyond some inspiration or your own opinions, which I'd love to hear. I'm gonna put this on YouTube, I guess. So wait until 28 minutes into the video to say this, but I'd love to see in the comments if you think that, what your impressions are of this, right? Is it good? Um, are the ideas good? Are there, is it blatantly copied from some sci-fi book or short story that you read that I don't know about, um, right? Is it, are you impressed by the ideation? What do you think about this, the screenplay that was written? all those sorts of things. Because to me, I think like the biggest thing to take away here would be the ideation. And I wish I could show you Agent GPT. I wish it was working like it normally does because um, you know, that's really powerful. I don't know what's going on with it tonight. But um, yeah, I think that's about it. Give me one second, I'm gonna pause for a split moment, make sure Agent GPT is not working now. Okay, I paused it earlier, so it actually, I'm paused from where I took off. So I was getting that issue, but it was writing more ideas, right? Um, the mind miner in a world where memories can be extracted and sold, an underground memory dealer Elise finds herself in a moral dilemma. By selling the fond memories of her elderly clients, she helps them ease their suffering from loss and loneliness, but inadvertently causes them to lose their identity. One day she extracts a memory that reveals a hidden crime committed decades ago. She must decide whether to use this information for her own gain or to bring justice to the victim. It's pretty interesting. Let's see, is there thing about like um, stories about like sci-fi stories? Sci-fi stories about people selling memories. So this is one from 2015. 
that was just one idea, but let's just see, right? Um, from 1966. This is sort of the model for total recall. Synopsis. This is more about total recall, so, okay. Here's some really short story. Okay, so there's ideas about some memories, but, you know, not a ton, but there's stuff there. So, okay, let's see how Agent GPT is going now. Um, I mean, honestly, I'm not going to show you all of these. I just wanted you to see now that's working again. Hopefully, continue working. So, right, here's even more ideas like Spectrum, about holographic technology. Um, Think about neural implants. Kind of interesting. I like that some of them are like, you know, controlled by it. See, right now, yeah, it keeps doing this rate limit thing, which sucks, because again, I don't, I'm not sure what's going on, because normally it doesn't do that, and it'll just go and go and go and give you all these metaphors. But we can always kind of see what Agent GPT would be doing as well. So, all right, um, that's it for now. Hey, got my daughter's art in the background. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully you found this interesting. Again, comment, leave, like, let me know. Impressed, not impressed, stupid, really interesting, mind-blowing, whatever. Would love to hear. And um, thanks for watching. Really appreciate that.